The Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance. Gave me a very sad, sad backward glance as he lifted himself by the seat of his pants. And I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he heisted himself and took leave of this place. And all that the Lorax left here in this mess was a small pile of rocks with one word, unless. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot. Nothing is going to get better. It's not. So catch, calls the once learned. He lets something fall. It's a truffle of seed. It's the last one of all. Plant a new truffle, treat it with care, give it clean water, and feed it fresh air. Then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back. That was it? Where was the return of the truffle trees? Of the Lorax? Where was the happy ending? As a kid, I didn't understand. I thought there had to be some sort of happily ever after. It wasn't until I read the Lorax that I realized that wasn't always true. It's been that open ending that stuck with me ever since. Because it wasn't like anything I've ever read. Dr. Seuss changed me. His work shaped who I am today, and I don't know where I'd be without his stories. I was fortunate enough to attend a school where books were intended to be read to completion, where the Big Friendly Giant or Mr. Popper's Penguins began and ended in a classroom that prioritized storytelling. But things have changed, and the culprit isn't just technology. It runs deep into the center of America's education system, where traditional teaching methods have been flipped upside down to accommodate for higher proficiency in standardized test scores. America will not succeed in the 21st century unless we do a far better job of educating our sons and daughters. Whether we meet that obligation not only reflects who we are as Americans, it will change young lives forever. Ever since the adoption of the Common Core State Standards, We don't read for fun anymore. In fact, we don't read anymore. Because what the policy demanded was a higher output of math and reading skills countrywide. And that meant teaching to a test in a one-size-fits-all approach to learning. The architect of Common Core, David Coleman, once told a webinar audience in 2011 that they sought to move away from the most popular forms of student writing, the exposition of a personal opinion or the presentation of a personal narrative. The only problem, forgive me for saying this so bluntly, the only problem with those two forms of writing is as you grow up in this world, you realize people really don't give a shit about what you feel or what you think. These are the words that have been told to the next generation of students. What's it like to be a fourth grader and take some test and have to come home and your parents look at it and you're basic or you're some not basic instead of relating to a character through written adventures kids have been taught to look at essays and documents and at the very best passages of the stories we once read in full in order to dissect and analyze to identify the type of literature and pick it apart so a story no longer contains any magic left in those pages there'd be a small, small amount of justification if these policies had actually worked. But the lack of improvement in America's schools points to a bigger issue. The hardships of students aren't originating in the classroom. They're festering out of poverty-stricken households where children, mostly those of color, are victims of a broken system, a system where policies like the Common Core hurt more than help. Because what these regiments are looking for isn't growth. It's a binary system seeking success or failure. And when the Obama administration rewarded states with prosperous care packages, and it's the competitive nature of this initiative that we believe helps make it so effective. Public schools were left with little choice to reject. All of a sudden, I'm sitting in the cafeteria teacher's lunchroom. Six years after I graduated, I was a little struck by how angry some of the teachers were about like teaching. I, I, that struck me. And students aren't the only victims. America's teaching faculty have been notoriously underappreciated and underpaid. 20% of U.S. teachers need a second job. 25% leave the job every year. 
And for every dollar that teachers internationally earn, 65 cents is what goes to American educators. Countries like Finland harbor appropriate funding for their education system, allowing teachers to work less for more, while still being able to pull in higher academic scores than its American counterpart. What do you do when your teacher's not having success in the classroom? And the Finnish person was like, we train them. And the U.S. person was like, what if they're still not having success? And the Finnish person was like, then we give them more training. I think the idea was like, you don't give up on teachers. The United States is falling behind in every facet of American education. Thank you. We all have that one teacher, the one that we'll never forget. My second and third grade teacher, Mrs. Buckley, was one of the pillars of my upbringing. And to know that she was most likely poorly compensated for her immeasurable work in the classroom. What to do with the core curriculum in 2023? We all need an educated populace. Think what happens if we don't have thoughtful, mindful, curious, skilled young people. While most states have appealed to Common Core standards, its effects still linger. And it's scary to think what lies ahead for our schools. But the magic of books and reading have not disappeared. We might have to look a little harder and accommodate for lower attention spans. But there are the Junie B. Joneses of today, reaching out a hand to desperate teachers who need that leg up. So hope for a new age beyond the common core, where children can learn what it means to connect to a character and sympathize with an ending. But only when they turn that story to its final page.